I saw book map mm-hmm. and I was like, what is book map? And then from there, it just, that's when I get into discord. That's when I started learning, just going all those videos that Bruce provides great, great, great videos on education of how to use book map and just the book map discord and book map YouTube channel. Really, really good. Like the visual aspect of book map of seeing the actual order flow of seeing those liquidity levels of seeing it's like, okay, um, I think there's a resistance level here where I'll just use the actual line of like either trading view or, or think or swim. But seeing it on book map, it's like, okay, now I have a stronger confirmation of there's a lot of sellers here. Let me not make a buy over here or something. When I saw the book map with those liquidity levels there, it really changed the game of like how to actually think it's an or just make sure where the big money's at. I was really scared at first. And then I think I spoke with you and other traders. They just say like, hey, just keep posting content. We can give you positive criticism of how to improve overall. And then I was like, what's there to lose? It's free. You can just keep posting your trades. You get a lot of good help from professional traders. And you can also build up networking and you can get book map for three months with data. But thanks to the book map competition, just posting it online was kind of like journaling and always explaining the reasoning why of all mm-hmm. the trades and being able to explain it to other traders actually made me a, a, sl- a better trader. Jayla, thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's, thank you uh, so much, Owen. Yeah, I've been looking forward to speaking to you. You are one of the early uh, participants of Blue Jacket, one of the first winners. I think you won the was it November competition last year. And, it was uh, uh, the December one. Ah, the yeah. December. Okay, yeah. So yeah, definitely it was last year, and uh, you know, so you you're one of the early ones, and um, yeah, so. I'd like to start this off by asking a bit about you, um, you know, what you're willing to share, like who you are, and, and we'll get into how you got into trading, but if you could tell us a bit about who you are, uh, that would be fun. Uh, first of all, Owen, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. Greatly appreciate it. Um, as you know, my name is JLA. Um, been training for a few years. Um, my background is completely different from trading. I have a science degree. Um, I have two science degrees. My first degree is in biochemistry. My second degree is in cellular and molecular biology. Um, So I'm completely off the normal finance or accounting or just the trading route. Um, How I actually got into trading, it's because I always wanted to get into med school. Uh, I always knew that the cost of medical school was going to be significantly high. So I always thought about, let me see if I can try to use some sort of like side hustle or some sort of like alternative income. And um, what I found was it was dividend investing and trading. Um, Those were the two. Um, The first one, the dividend investing, I was like, this is going to take forever. Let me see if I can use uh, trading, Uh, look up on YouTube, look on different resources that I can use uh, to see if I can actually compensate for that medical school, um, the tuition cost. So that was actually how I got into trading. Um, how I discovered Bookmap, it was really, really weird. I think I just stumbled upon it when I was watching, I think it was uh, Scott. Yeah, I think it was Scott. Scott Pulsini? Yeah, Scott Pulsini. Um, it was just a random video I saw of him mm-hmm. because I was looking. I think it was into Apex because mm-hmm. I was getting into um, see if I can try to get a funded account to see if I can actually work on it on my trading skills that way. And then when I looked on um, Scott's website, I saw Bookmap, mm-hmm. and I was like, "What is Bookmap?" And then from there, it just um, that's when I get into Discord. That's when I started learning, um, just going all those videos um, that can, Bruce provides. You- great, great great videos on education of how to use bookmap and just the bookmap discord and bookmap youtube channel really really good uh i'm curious do you think your your background knowledge in biology ha- like has an impact on trading does it help in some way like because you know you have a different a little bit it's the fact is because i'm a science major yeah um i always like to try to find um rationale to something Mm -hmm. So because that was my biggest issue, I think, when I first started trading, because um, on the videos that I learned, it's like there's um, there's the randomness in trading. 
And then I understand it has to be some sort of logical explanation to trading of how there has to be some sort of logical explanation, some sort of protocol where successful traders that they use to constantly like keep getting gains per se to constantly win in the market. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like that, um, that conflict, that mental conflict is I know there's randomness, but because of my background, I know there has to be some sort of like logical explanation of like X plus Y equals Z. There has to be something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there, um, I was using basic technical analysis. Sometimes it was a hit or miss. And then, like I said, um, I was trying to find a different alternative route, and then that's how I discovered order flow via book map. And then that's when it started to like getting a like, I was getting really, really close to an aha moment, and I think I finally understand it. Yeah, there's some moments where <clears throat> when I'm trading, I'll make a few mistakes here and there, but I'll totally understand of why I made my mistake. It, and it was actually more through book map than just regular technical analysis. Yeah. Okay. And so, but how did your trading kind of evolve, uh, especially after discovering Bookmap? Did, did, did it change your strategy? I mean, of course it did. In what way did it, did it change? I think it was more of like the visual aspect of Bookmap, of seeing the actual order flow, of seeing those liquidity liquidity levels, of seeing it's like, okay, um, I think there's a resistance level here where I'll just use the actual line of like either trading view. Or, or think or swim, but seeing it on book map, it's like, okay, now I have a stronger confirmation of there's a lot of sellers here. Let me not put, let me not make a buy order here or something because I was using, my old strategy was just mostly just breakout trading, which I was pretty successful in 2020, but then didn't work in other years. But when I saw the book map with the, like with those liquidity levels there, it really changed the game of like how to actually think it's an or just make sure where the big money's at. So if I see a large, I'll see a large lot in either an ES or a large order on Microsoft or NVIDIA, I know that would be a good area to either sell or like reduce my position size there yeah. compared to just leaving my position, which I, which I used to do before book map. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it gives you this extra layer of information that not only adds yeah, confidence, it helped but you know, a ton. increases the probability. So would you describe, mm -hmm. you say before you were a breakout trader, so how would you describe your current style in, in a nutshell? Uh, my current style is mostly now I just focus on market structure where and trend follow. Okay. But that was when I, when I continued with Bookmap, okay. yeah. Okay. Just making sure of the, the higher highs, and higher lows, if it was a bullish structure and then it was lower high, lower lower lows and lower highs yeah yeah okay cool yeah uh, i'm also a bit of a trend follower myself uh mm -hmm. although it's hard to um you know because trend following at least for me uh, it's often a case of buying the breakout right but breakout trading mm -hmm. as you as you expressed uh, Previously, it's not necessarily the most profitable way, you know, it's you're buying mm -hmm. highs and that isn't always the smartest way, but obviously yeah. combine it with liquidity levels and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there's, yeah, there's definitely uh, something in that. Um, so can I ask you then, um, about Blue Jacket, like uh, how did you, you know, how did you come across Blue Jacket? Why did you take part and, and, and so on? I was just trying to find different techniques of how to improve my trading overall. I was really scared at first. And then I think I spoke with you and other traders. They just said like, hey, just keep posting content. And then we can also, uh, we can give you positive criticism of how to improve overall. And then I was like, what's, to, what's there to lose? Um, it's free. Uh, you can just keep posting your trades. You get um, a lot of good help from professional traders. And you can also build up networking and you can get book map um, the, for three months with data. And I was like, okay, everything's positive. I don't see any risk towards it, towards not doing the competition. Mm -hmm. It's only going to improve my trading. So I was like, okay, let me just go for it. Cause normally I'm a pretty shy guy when it comes to like posting stuff on the internet. I really don't like to be posting stuff, but when it came to the trading and with the discord, um, everybody was really, really, 
I uh, just want all the traders to do well overall in, mm -hmm. in the bookmap discord. So I was like, okay, let me just go for the competition. Yeah. Yeah. The community, uh, community element is a big part of it. Um, and, uh, yes. Yeah. Jack mentioned that in the previous event and, and it's mm -hmm. obviously very important. Um, so one thing I've understood uh, with running this competition is that mm -hmm. it's very much, yeah, one about the community and two about encouraging people to journal and to, you know, be self-reflective and also communicate with others. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm curious, uh, obviously you're, you're taking trading very seriously, but um, like, how was your journaling before and did, did this competition help in any way? Like, because you were maybe ex, maybe you were, you know, journaling before, but because now you're trying to explain it to other people, did it change in some way or, or I, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Ironically, I wasn't journaling because like oh. I said, when I, because I came from a totally different background yeah. when I was trading, like I said, I'm a science major, yeah. but it was a big problem of mine of not journaling and not realizing the mistakes because I'll see what I'll do, but since I won't review it, I will just either commit the same mistake or just won't be able to recognize it quickly. But thanks to the book map um, competition, just posting it online, it was kind of like journaling yeah. and always explaining the reasoning why of all mm -hmm. the trades and being able to explain it to other traders actually made me a, a, sl a better trader. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. Um... <laughs> I'm very happy to hear that. I mean, w one thing I've realized myself is when I, whenever I've shared trades uh, with the community, it's like sometimes mm -hmm. you can tell yourself something like, I'm going to take this trade for this reason, but then because nobody's watching, you can maybe mm -hmm. hold the position too long or, you know, you, you're kind of even going against your own logic. But if, you, mm -hmm. if you're showing other people, you don't want to look stupid in front of other people, right? That's one element. That's the thing, yeah. And, uh, and also, obviously, uh, most people don't think anybody else is stupid. They, they know that everybody's trying to get better and learning. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of, um, a lot of support within the community, which helps as well, because some people have more experience or, or they maybe have less experience and you explain it to them, uh, your mm -hmm. reasoning, and that actually ingrains it deeper for you as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, fantastic uh, to hear. Mm. Is there anything else that you want to say about like the experience uh, of doing this competition before we jump into some of your charts or overall, I was really surprised about like, like you said about the community, about yeah. how many like actual traders are actually willing to help each other grow, yeah. which really surprised me because I was in other discords. They were kind of decent, but they weren't always um, as helpful as like you can talk to the moderators you can talk with other traders you can get that you can get feedback relatively quickly and you can learn different styles like because when i joined bookmap i was just using um my style of trading but then i was combining it with either with j trader uh with a little bit of scott um and with other professional traders and moderators and i was able to get all that knowledge and it's all for free which is surprising it's it's just ridiculous about how much information that you get for free mm -hmm. and the community aspect with the bookmap discord. So I'm like extremely, extremely grateful. Yeah. Great. Well, <laughs> I'm extremely grateful for your kind words. Um, obviously I'm not the only one involved, but, uh, yeah, yeah. it's uh, definitely a, a big thing. Um, one of the, mm -hmm. well, one of the many positives of bookmap. So whenever you're ready, Jayla, let's uh, let's go through these trades from the competition. These are all trades that you took Perfect. during the competition, yes. right? And um, these are are some of the charts that we looked at, and you know we saw as high quality content. That's why you won the competition. So you you were one of the early winners. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, nice to go back and look at the the content, get a, a little bit of a deeper dive into. Uh, what was going through your head and how you were looking at things back then. Um, so yeah, take it away whenever you're ready. Okay, perfect. So, um, Owen, once again, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I'm really grateful for Bookmap and you actually coming towards me and just asking 
to even do this presentation. Um, I learned a lot from you guys. I'm really grateful. Um, but let's start off with the, the presentation. This, as you can see, this is December 5th. Um, it was a, tra a trade on Meta or Facebook, basically the same thing. Um, I was really concerned about this day um, because there was no volume dots. Normally with Bookmap, the volume dots are in real time. However, I was confirming price action and I saw a bullish momentum. So it was a formation of higher highs and higher lows. Um, I did this trade around like 9, 9.45ish. I was actually in a 125 call. It was just a quick scalp. Uh, so basically in a nutshell, this trade was, I was, my main target was the 125. And I knew because of the bullish momentum, there was a high probability of that 125 being reached because bullish momentum was still maintained. Uh, bullish price action was still maintained. And due, um, due to the videos that I learned in Bookmap and also in the Discord, um, large cap tech stocks tend to go towards major liquidity levels. So therefore, once I entered that trade, my main target was 125. Here, I was risking about like one um, for probably a two to one uh, risk to reward. Uh, my strategy was using Meta, uh, the price action from Meta, and also confirming that technique, uh, confirming the price action with SPY and Triple Q. Um, I call it like a correlation technique, but it's really a common uh, practice uh, with large tech stocks to confirm the price action with triple Q and SPY. Yeah. Uh, let me go towards the next slide and then. So um, is mm -hmm. this, uh, this okay? Is this sorry? This is still the same trade. Yeah. Okay. It's just zoomed in. It's right. going to be the same trade. So yeah, it's just zoomed in. So here I'm just going to like draw it out. Let's see if this will work. Okay. okay. Perfect. So here, around 9.45 is when I entered the trade, and then my main target was right here at that 125 major liquidity level, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to draw a box right there. Okay, so here around 9.45, it was quick, um, quick, quick run up, retracement, another run up, and then a retracement back to VWAP. Then here, I saw the run up again. So this support was never broken. And then here, it retested here around VWAP. So therefore, I thought, okay, there was bullish price action, bullish momentum. I confirmed mm -hmm. it with SPY and Triple Q already. So I know the price had a high probability of reaching 124 to 125. I entered the trade around here, 945. Um, that's when price was approximately about 123. My my risk was um, when if price action broke VWAP. So that was about 123 or 1. So here, my main target was 125. It was a 2 to 1 trade. It never reached it, but it reached very, very close. Um, it reached between 124 and 125. Here, um, I'm not going to try to fight the trade because here, it started to reach towards 125, but it never reached it. Around 124.5, 124, 125. It started to reach resistance around that level, and it but it never broke out during this time period of 9:45 to 10ish. So around this time, slightly before 9:15, close to 10, is when I actually took off the trade. Mostly because I saw this double. Oh, now this is getting a little, a little, a little messy. Let me see if I try to okay. erase this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me go back. Okay, here it was forming like a double or triple top here, and I knew that pattern was slightly uh, was slightly bearish, so therefore I'll just set like a trailing stop over there just in case. If it did pass that level, my trailing stop would work, but since it went, it started to go down. It reached, um, I got stopped out, but still I made a good profit. It was a two to one ratio, and I was really, I was really content with the trade overall. And then, so that was trade number one uh, from. Um, so I December wanted to 5th. ask a question about. So mm -hmm. part of the analysis here is is that the price is uh, kind of attracted to the large liquidity level at one twenty five, right? Obviously, you've got the trend, the yeah. correlation, and so on. But mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, do you have any kind of uh, hypothesis about why price moves towards liquidity? I mean, I know that you know the the common. The simplest answer is that the function of the market is to facilitate trade. So by definition, price will move towards uh, liquidity. 
to to facilitate yeah. these transactions but um mm -hmm. do you have any kind of theories or you just don't care you just see it and you trade what you see or have you thought about the whys behind that and just what uh, the whys you know? i just think about it it was similar to carmy uh, from his youtube channel he also uses book map as well yeah um it's just the the entire stock market is just like an auction so therefore if there's so many sellers over here that are interested then that means they're going to have to be some buyers and even then those sellers can actually try to push price towards their level mm -hmm. so i know okay there's 54,000 try to get try to draw this a little bit better there's 54,000 just right here at 125 there's 54,000 approximately 55,000 sellers and they want to do business in the market so there's going to be a high probability of those sellers either trying to push their price um push price towards their target or just probably just to um push their target and then just dump it on the market which did happen during this time period once it started getting close to um 124 125 ish that's when it started to go down yeah. as you can see from here yeah and there, and there may be some front runners as well that also mm -hmm. see the levels so they're getting in ahead of it yeah, but I think about it mostly as just the auction where it's just mostly buyers and sellers. If there's yeah. going to be a large portion of sellers, um, they're going to probably either uh, try to get buyers to actually push it towards their level or just use that as a strong resistance level where this will not pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me go on to the next trade. Uh, okay. So this was a Tesla trade. Um, this was I actually learned this strategy a little bit from Jay Trader. Um, he's one of the um, a good trader from the book map Discord. He's also yeah. like a good moderator and a great educator as well. Um, but I also learned different techniques from uh, from Doug, uh, Jay Trader, uh, Bruce, from many uh, traders in the Discord, which helped a lot. But onto this trade, this was from December six, uh, twenty twenty two. This is regarding Tesla. Uh, this was actually this one where I was actually using um, CBD. I don't tend to use CBD often because it does give mixed signals, but here it provided a pretty strong signal. Um, I knew a, there was a bunch of liquidity here. Um, let me see if I can just try to draw it a little bit better. Let's see if I can just highlight it. Uh, kind of working. There we go. Much better. Okay. I knew there was large liquidity levels here, and there was very little here. Mm -hmm. Once I saw this bounce, let me just try to get it. Once I saw this bounce over here, I was pretty sure that was a bull trap. And I remember seeing something from, from J Trader when he talked about it because he loves trading Tesla. So once I saw this pattern, this V, this upside down V pattern, and once I noticed there was all this liquidity here, I was pretty certain that price was going to go down. Um, I confirmed with CBD, and I also confirmed with, um, as you can see from my notes, my reasoning, I also did confirm with SPY and Triple Q. So yeah. getting SPY, Triple Q, um, bearish, um, bearish price action. Uh, bearish price action on Tesla, and with CBD, I went with a 100, um, 180 put. Um, it was this, it was the Friday expiration. I entered around 9:35. I did enter a little early because I should have probably entered around this VWAP break to get a, a stronger confirmation. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, during when I was trading, I knew I was probably 95% certain that price was going to go towards those liquidity levels, and it did. Um, I was a little concerned because I thought once it hit 178, I thought it could have bounced up, but I did use VWAP as a guide. Um, as long as price action stayed below VWAP, I was in the trade. And then around like 10, 1007 is when I exited because mm -hmm. I was really concerned about this price level of 175 because there was 183,000 buyers there. Once I knew that because confirming all of these these levels, 
it was nowhere as strong as the 175. So I actually exited probably a little bit less around 175.5, 176, mostly because I knew there was a high probability that it was going to bounce off that 175. And I was already in pretty good profit overall. So I would just set a trailing stop and then I'm good to go. Okay. Uh, just going back though, you said you mentioned you mm -hmm. entered a little bit earlier. So where would be the downside risk on the short trade? Would it be yeah. if price moved above the 185 uh, offers level, then you would exit at a loss or how, how would you manage the risk? Okay. In terms of managing risk, let me actually go. I think I entered, I entered well because I did enter around the 183 area. Well, mm -hmm. I'll put slightly lower. I think I entered around 82.5 to be exact. Let me get this. I entered around the 182. Um, I should have entered slightly lower, about 181, just to get a stronger confirmation of that VWAP break, because yeah. this could have happened just in case, where um, it could have been a bull trap, went down, tested VWAP, and then go back up to this 185. Mm -hmm. That 185, if it re if it went if it did that pattern, then this would be my risk. So I was risking about 2.5. So this was what I was risking about 2.5. So 2.5. So you you and would you would I, be exiting exactly at the 185 level or, or above or below? How how do you? A uh, slightly above. I would have gone probably 185.5. Yeah. Just in case. But it would okay. have been like a two, two risking two point five to three, and then that's to make. Let me just calculate it real quick. Yeah, it was like about a six to three, which is approximately about two to one, which mm -hmm. is what I like in most of my trades. Either a one to one, ideally two to one, that's the ideal. But overall, because the thing is, I knew with Tesla, it does, um, it does move rapidly. It is a uh, it's a stock that moves pretty violently, especially yeah. during this time period of 2022. It was so I knew I had to be quick and I had to be <clears throat> I had to be I had to be really really confident in my trade. And during this instance, I was pretty confident because I knew about the bearish price action from SPY and Triple Q. I knew what CVD and I knew that upside down V pattern from J Trader that he talks up a lot um, when it comes to. To bull traps and bear traps with Tesla. Um, yeah. and this was 180. Um, ideally, if I would have done the trade again, I would have probably went with a 182.5 or a 183 put. Um, that I think that would have been a better trade overall, just to um, avoid that extra risk. But overall, it was a good trade in terms of profit. It did well. But mm -hmm. to do to go back in the trade, I think I would have gone with a higher, um, a higher put, probably more in the money put. Okay. Just to um, just to reduce my risk, just in case, because I know with these options, especially with Tesla, um, if you look too much at the percentage gain or loss, it can um slightly skew your um the psychology overall and okay. your belief. But um, overall, it, um, mm -hmm. so, so you mean you say if you go too out of the money, you 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 may get more greedy, or what? What do you mean by it skew your psychology? The thing is. It's just the fact that I didn't. This could have been a possibility where it probably hit the 185 mm. and then bounced down. Yeah, I see. That's the thing. And then when I'm in the trade, the difference between in the money. Let's just say if I went with the 80 183.5 or 185, but I don't remember the exact numbers mm -hmm. of the actual option chain. But I'm pretty sure that um, with Tesla, it's actually 2.5. So it would have been a 182.5 or a 185, but uh, those slight differences of in the money, it can change the percentage at least a good 20, 30 percent. So yeah. let's just say if I was risking, uh, it was a two to one, it was a good trade. But the thing is, I'll be down a good 40 to 50 percent. Mm -hmm. And if that moment, if that if the price actually went up to, um, it went up, did the upside down D, but then hit 185 and then went down. I would have probably got stopped out mentally, knowing that the trade was going to work. It's just the fact that I choose the 180 put. Let me just go back. Knowing that I choose the 180 put, I would have been down a good 40, 50%. And then knowing mm -hmm. me, 
during this time period, I would have probably gotten out of the trade. Go and highlight this. I would have probably gotten out of the trade because I see like, oh, I'm down 40 to 50 percent. That um, this trade is not working. Let me just get out. Yeah. But if I did a 185 put to give myself some cushion, or a 182.5 put gave myself a little bit more cushion, I would have been probably down just a good 10, 20 percent. Yeah. And knowing that, and just seeing the percentage, it's a psychology. But learning from um, Doug, uh, learning from J Trader overall, um, he likes to focus on the actual trade and not too much on the percentage. I'm still working on that. It's really, it's just uh, trading is very extremely psychological, and when you see a play that, even though that you're you feel com confident about the play, seeing that you're down a good fifty to sixty percent, it's um, it makes you really think about the trade and just probably get out, knowing yeah. that if you just hold on to it just a, let's just say an extra five ten minutes more, you would have probably made that two to one, two to one trade. Which would have probably netted at least over a hundred percent profit. Yeah, you know, at some point I was planning to ask you what yeah. you think is more important in general in trading. Is it the entry or the exit? But I realize that that question is kind of obsolete because you know, as you're saying, um, if you wait this for confirmation, you have mm -hmm. more confidence perhaps, but you're also getting like a slightly worse price, and and you know. <laughs> If you if you mess up the entry, it can have a huge effect on your mindset for that trade. And even if it's a good trade, yeah. you can potentially get out too early. Um, yeah, and it has to be the overall yeah. play. Um, in my opinion, if you know the pattern, if you know the play, um, the entry and exit are important. But when it comes to options, in the money, especially if you're day trading, in the money options is really really key. Yes, you can probably make more money out of the money, but if you go in the money, it just gives yourself that more um, that cushion overall, especially when it comes to stocks like Tesla. Tesla moves very very fast, and those um, percentage gains, those those profits can they can be out in an instant. So yeah. overall, it was a good trade, and I was happy about what the result. But if I would have done this trade again, I would have waited. Probably after that VWAP break, um, a better VWAP break. So it would have been probably exactly around 180 because once I knew that VWAP break, then I knew price was going to just go and dump. I think I entered slightly early price below VWAP. Um, I think when I entered, it was slightly, it was probably below 100%, not 100% sure though. Um, I have to go back into my notes um, on that day if I entered. Because it was around 9.35, so 9.35 is around here. Let me get the... 9.35 is around here. I should have waited here. Let me change the color so it looks easier for you. I should have probably entered here. Because now that's more confidence that I know mm -hmm. that VWAP break completely. And I know because of all these liquidity levels. And also because of um, SPY that... Let me highlight that. SPY and triple Q, but the thing is with um with Tesla, there tends to be um a strong correlation, but it's not as strong as compared to like Apple, Microsoft. But still, it is a good strategy to confirm always confirm. Um, well, in my trades, I don't know if other traders, like in other platforms, but mostly with um with Bookmap, I know a lot of traders do use. Um, they confirm with SPY and triple Q. Yeah, and I also and... use um CBD. But mm -hmm. CBD for me, it's hit or miss sometimes. Yeah, I, I was just uh, thinking back to the options things. From what I understand, it's if you're trading at the money, um, the the gamma is lower, so it's less sense. Delta is less sensitive to change, right? So that that's what you're saying. That if you trade too far out of the money and price moves against you, then it's going to result in a larger percentage loss or yeah. paper loss. Which affects because I would have probably gone with, because if I went with the 185, I would have probably got like a delta of maybe like 75 versus the 180. That would have been like a delta of like maybe 40 or 50. Mm -hmm. And um, so. last time we spoke, uh, you mentioned you use options 
mostly just for the leverage, right? There's no special reason you, you trade options rather than... I used it mostly way. just for the leverage, and also, um, it was, like, one of the very first things I started with, options. I did move on to yeah. futures a little bit. Um, I want to try to get better with futures overall later on, um, because I think, uh, because futures do provide, um, uh, that extra level of that extra leverage similar to options and there's mm -hmm. also less um, factors less variables to consider compared to options where you have to do consider about the Greeks mm -hmm. uh, the thing is I what I do like about options it's um, the different strategies that you can use yeah. so if there is a lot of sideways trading um, you, you can profit from that sideways um, price action mm -hmm. uh, with futures it's a little bit more difficult but with options uh, you can do a lot of crazy, crazy strategies overall. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's what I like about it. So I thought this was gonna be very, very similar. So during, during this time, I thought it was gonna be similar. So, um, this was December fourth, two twenty twenty two Tesla trade. Um, as you can see from my reasoning here, I thought it was gonna be very similar to the December six, even though the liquidity levels weren't the exact same, but they were similar. I saw liquidity levels here, 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 and here. Um, these probably the 156, 155 levels. Were, those were going to be my main targets. And then uh, here I entered extremely early. Good lord. So I entered around here. I think this was what because I thought. Of the December 6th trade, because I waited for that VWAP break, I thought this was going to be the same pattern. This was the pattern that I was talking about. If, if my, if the December 6th trade didn't work, so here, mm -hmm. it's a breakout. It started, it started to go down. I thought it was going to be the upside down V. I thought this was going to happen. Okay. In reality. In reality, this would actually happen. Thankfully, this was the one, this 162 uh, resistance level was maintained. But I did have to ride this out with 160 to 162. That was a $2 move against, against me. But that's what I was risking. I was risking this much to make this. It was basically a two to two, which is equal to a one to one. So overall, this was not a good trade, even though I did profit from the trade. Um, I should have waited probably around here with that VWAP break to go towards maybe the 157 level. But it did eventually work out in my favor. And here I went with the 155. Yeah, exactly. So I went with the 155, but because in this instance when I was trading, let me erase this. I thought this was going to happen, which I discussed earlier. I thought it was another upside down B pattern. So I thought this was going to happen, reach, and then go straight down. And then I waited here. Um, as you can see from the previous trade, let's go back. VWAP was broken cleanly here. And then it started to go down. When I was reviewing, I thought, okay, let me just go with this resistance. Let me see if that will work for the next time I trade. So when I traded Tesla on the December 14th, I got in way too early. Because I thought this was going to break the VWAP and it's going to go straight down. It never... That, and, um, when I'm trading, it's now I learned from many um, mistakes. Just wait till you get the confirmation. Don't assume you get confirmation. Always wait for confirmation. Mm -hmm. I did not yeah. wait for that VWAP break. It slightly retraced. Let me erase this. It slightly retraced. And then it went back to 162, yeah, around 161.5, 162. And then it started to slowly break. I should have entered the trade here. Around this VWAP break, 
go for this liquidity, either 158 or the 157. It eventually got very, very close to 157 and approached it because um, large caps like Tesla, like I said, with the meta trade, large tech stocks tend to go towards these major liquidity levels. I did went with the 155 put, which was my main target here. And CVD was slowly going down. But even though I did profit from this trade, um, since it was a one-to-one, -one, even though it was profitable, it was not ideal. Um, yeah. As you can see from my notes, I did stay calm because there was a prob there was a possibility that this 162 was not going to break. And then it's going to go straight down. And I really thought that Tesla was going to reach that 155. Once I saw this pattern, let's see, I exited around 939. Well, I exited way early too. I think it was I got I exited pretty early because I got scared. Even though I was a little calm here, once I saw the VWAP break, I was scared because I was probably down a good thirty to forty percent here, and I exited a little early. Nine thirty-six. Yeah, this is right here because I thought this was gonna happen. Yeah. Overall. I should have waited. I should have worked on my patience here, and just waited for that VWAP break, and then, and then wait for that um, that price target. I think once I once I started making some percentage gains, like probably like 10, 20 percent, um, I exited out relatively quickly, because I got a little scared. Um, yeah, but I, I like that no, you no. you say that yeah. though, because obviously it was a good setup overall, but maybe you didn't execute quite as well as you would have liked to, and. And that's mm -hmm. why it's not an ideal trade. So that's yeah, quite a professional view. Because um, mm -hmm. often, you know, more amateur traders, they just see the results, you know, winning trade, good trade, losing trade, bad mm -hmm. trade. But it's not always that simple, right? You can make a, yeah. a good trade that loses and you manage the risk well, or you can make a bad trade that wins or maybe a less than ideal trade, like in this case. Yeah, I, I mean, the, I, in I, terms I, of execution. Way... I mean, yeah, I probably exited way too early. I exited around that 39. I think overall, I think I got a little scared because I knew the movement from Tesla. Overall, it does move a lot. And then it hit that 162 and just went down a little bit. But overall, I should have waited for all my parameters to be set and yeah. then enter the trade. Because uh, like I said, once this BWAP broke right here around 945, then it started to reach towards 157. Um, Even though my main target was 155, because that was about, yeah, 212,000 contracts, which probably which pulled price action downwards. Um, but 157 was the strong support area. And then it just started to reverse back, and then it get close. And then it started doing that. Just, like, started bouncing up and down. Overall, it was a pretty decent trade, but um, here I should have just waited for all my parameters to be met. And then get into the trade and work on the patience. So that was definitely a okay trade, but it should have. It's more of a learning experience by far. Just wait for all your parameters to be set before entering the trade. Yeah, it makes That's sense. And see okay. all the confluence Here. and more confirmation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Here, um, I think I, yeah, because the, I was in the process of buying Spot Gamma and their Spot Gamma Hero program and their algorithm. Um, here, I think I waited a little bit more. I started to get more confirmation. This is Hero um, from Spot Gamma. I got the idea from Doug. Um, most of his, he does provide a lot of videos on Bookmap on YouTube for free, and he does use um, Spot Gamma, and he uses the the Hero program um, extensively. So I got the idea from him. Then here was a similar pattern. This was actually very similar to Tesla. With the upside, uh, let me just show it like this: the upside down V pattern, uh, breakage of VWAP, which is right here. Oh, and then it started going towards major liquidity levels. Uh, once I saw this, because I knew, I mean, if anybody has more questions about Spot Gamma with the Hero, it's just go to Doug's channel. He explains it a lot more. Uh, this line, the purple line. Let me see if my mouse will work. Okay. It's not working too well. So there is one. Okay, this purple line right here is with options. 
the farther it goes down, it's more like people are either buying puts or selling calls. And if it goes up, if the slope is up positive, that means there's going to be a stronger. Um, there's more traders buying call, well, buying calls or selling puts. Okay, then this was my confirmation overall. Here, once I got that upside down V pattern and that breakage of VWAP, yeah, and then using C, this time I use CVD and SPY um, and Triple Q, I entered the trade. Uh, entered at 9:49, exited around 7. So let me just get it right here. So entered around here. I got a breakage of VWAP, and I saw a very similar pattern to the the Tesla trade. This is from December 6. Yeah, let me see if I can zoom up. Okay, if you see the a pattern where it's the upside down B. Now I'm gonna go back to the Nvidia trade. Let me see. Right here, December 15th. Okay, this is really s similar. It's gonna be trap down past VWAP breakage of VWAP, and then it's gonna go towards major liquidity levels. And a strong negative CVD, and this time I actually use uh, Spot Gamma Spot Gamma Hero to confirm there was strong put buying to push that price action downwards to that to those major levels. I did exit around here, around 168.5, yeah, around that level. Um, I was not expecting a 167. Overall, because I did make a pretty good return, it was more than a two to one, two to one trade, and then it just reached my main target. I was a little surprised it did reach 167, but overall it was a two to one trade, and I was really happy overall. Uh, let me just go review my notes. Yeah, confirm with CBD. I looked for that upside down V pattern showing bearish momentum. I went with the 165. Yeah, here I did this. I did a very similar thing. In regards to get not getting the proper option, I think it was mm -hmm. just due to cost. Maybe I just wanted to get out of the money, but overall, 165. Yeah, like analyzing the trade, I think I have no idea. Maybe just because of cost, I didn't want to have that much risk on my portfolio because I think I had a pretty small account that I was trying to grow. Um, I think it's the only uh, only explanation, but I should have probably gone if I would have done this again yeah I would have probably gone with the 170 170 probably a 170 put I was gonna risk um I was at 171 risk one so it was gonna be if it broke back 172 if if it did this um the upside down V and then uh, broke VWAP towards 173 but my stop loss would have been around 172. So I was risking one overall to make, uh, yeah, about two. Yeah, about two to one trade. Yeah, because um, I stopped around 168, 168.5 right here. And I entered around 171. Oh, sorry, three to one. This is more of a three to one, sorry. Yeah, but overall, um, rethink about the trade. Overall, it was a good analysis. Um, good trade setup overall. Just with the Nvidia 165 put, I would have probably gone with the 170 put. But overall, it was pretty good. Um, just got to be careful with those out of the money, uh, those out of the money puts because since it is day trading, um, when I'm day trading options, I I learned that, um, ironically from the Discord channel from uh from Bookmap. Uh, just be careful when you're trading with those, those, um, those options for either just buying and selling the same day. Just make sure that it's in the money, uh, just to reduce risk overall. Because, like I said, let me go back here. If 172 was broken, let's just say if it hit 172 on or 172.1, and then it, then it began to. Um, to drop overall, I would have probably got stopped out, mm -hmm. and that would have been probably a forty to fifty percent loss. That was because I was so out of the money 
because I had a 165. Um, here okay. overall, the pattern worked. The trade did work. Um, should have gone with a higher, a more in the money put. So happy with the trade overall, because the setup was perfect. It was like a two to one, three to one, uh, trade. Which I know with options, a uh, two to one, three to one trade can probably generate easy 50, 60 percent gains, but the amount of risk, it would have probably gone against me because sometimes with the percentage loss, um, I would have probably got mad. Overall, happy with the trade, but similar to the previous trade, um, with Tesla, should have gone with that in the money, uh, a more in the money option. Mm -hmm. This is the last chart. Yeah, this is the last one. This is the last one, similar one. Um, Nvidia. I think this one, similar idea. Uh, yeah, this was just a straight, straight flush down. I think. Let me see. Yeah. Five. I think this was slightly better overall. Let's see what time I exited? No, I, this was a quick trade. This was a quick scalp. I should have just held on. Um, man, uh, reviewing these trades now, it's at least it's a good learning experience overall. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I yeah. tend to be better at scalping. Um, and then later mm -hmm. on with Bookmap, with J Trader and the other traders, just, um, just follow the trade and just, just let it ride. Let your runners, just let your runners go. Yeah. yeah. Still working on that aspect of trading because, like I said, trading is very psychological sometimes. Especially with options, um, sometimes you can be up fifty percent and then you can lose that money like in ten, not even two minutes. <laughs> so, um, here I think yeah, this was just a straight flush. All my parameters were met basically. Um, below VWAP, breakage of VWAP here. Uh, I think uh, CVD was dropping slowly. I should have waited because I knew because I had a one fifty. Let me go back to the notes because I had a one fifty five put which was right around here. Because, yeah, I did it because I remember now going based off this trade. I went out of the money based off target. I should have went out of the money based off entry and not off target because here was my target. was the 155. I got out at 156, and I probably entered around 159. Um, here I was risking about this. Let me see if I can try to highlight this. Yeah, I was risking two to make. <sighs> this is the one to two. This wasn't ideal. I think I got concerned. Yeah, I should have. I should have kept it. Okay. Here, um, it was a good trade. There was strong bearish price action, strong bear um bearish liquidity levels overall. Same with one fifty one and one fifty around here too. Um, overall. The <clears throat> the trade did work well, um, even though it was out of the money. I think it was because of these these strong price actions. Because like what I talked about with Doug earlier, um, spot gamma spot gamma hero is with option flow, <clears throat> and and options can drive price action overall. And there was a strong strong sellers overall. This was just Probably the sellers here of the actual underlying of the Nvidia, and then I pro and the CBD confirmed it. Mm -hmm. mm. Going over the trade, it was pretty good, but I should have learned. I should have held on to the trade, mostly because there was no change in market structure overall. I don't know. I think I I think I got out of the trade because I was scared. Uh, yeah. Going back to this trade, um, it was a it was a good trade. It was a good setup overall. I don't know. I have to review my notes again. I'm pretty sure that I did confirm with um with SPY and triple Q. That is pretty much a good staple of mine. If I trade any large caps, always confirm with with SPY and triple Q just to see how they're doing overall. If I see bearish momentum in triple Q and SPY, and I, there's going to be a high probability with large caps. This one was Nvidia. Yeah, it's a little. And I know with Nvidia, it's very similar to Tesla. There's large price movements, but it maintained 
bearish market structure, I should have kept that trade. Um, it was a 155, and this was going to be if I held on to the trade. Let's see. What is it? Yeah, this would have been. Yeah. This would have been like probably like an 8 to 2, which is a 4 to 1. Yeah, that would have been at least a 200, maybe 300% gain mm -hmm. if I held on. Especially if I had. Um, Probably the 160 put instead of the 155. Because I entered perfectly. I entered on time. 935. Once I saw that break of BWAP. And once I confirmed those liquidity levels on the bottom. And using SPY and Triple Q. I should have kept this trade. I think it was just because I was probably concerned. Or maybe I had to do. I had to enter relatively quickly. Maybe I had to do some errands. But overall. I am happy with the result because I think I got out here around, yeah, when it was approaching. So I got out around 156. I should have probably just held on to the trade, just analyzed if there was any change in market structure. There was no change. Once it hit 155, it began to stagnate and then, excuse me, and then it began to drop down. But yeah, it, um, instead of like a one to one trade, it was a 4 to 1 trade. Should have kept it. But each trade, it's always good just to review and just use it as a learning experience. Yeah, exactly. And this is what Blue Jacket is uh, all about, actually, to yeah to kind of to get some accountability as well because you're sharing it mm -hmm. with the community. You, you have other maybe more experienced traders telling you how you could have done it better. You have less experienced traders asking you what you're doing and you get to explain it mm -hmm. to them. And obviously you're you're journaling yourself and reviewing trades. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. It's mm -hmm. whether you learn from them or not, right? So that was the thing. So that's yeah. why I actually really enjoyed about the blue jacket competition. Because overall it was a win win no matter what. Um because yeah. Bookmap Discord first of all is free. Yep. Getting a ton of information. And the competition, you have other professional traders, they can critique your trades to see how you can actually get better, provide that positive criticism. And you can actually learn from other traders and also the newer traders that are coming into the Discord. You can just like bounce off ideas. So overall, it was a great experience um, participating in the Blue Jacket competition. I learned a lot. I focused a lot on just trading setups. Even though, like as you can see, some of my trades, they weren't the best per se. I did try to focus on a certain protocol, um, a certain strategy to find that edge. which. Um, Doug P discusses Bruce, J Trader, a bunch of professionals discuss it about all the time. Um, market structure, um, the content, uh, the context, sorry, context of the market, and just trade setups overall and patterns and patterns and like what's the percentage of the pattern, how is how does it work? I learned a lot from the competition and I'm really really grateful once again, Owen, for this opportunity. Um, yeah, I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to ask you a hypothetical. If there's a, a newer trader um, that's just coming in and they want to take part in a competition like Blue Jacket, but they may be not confident, uh, what would you tell them? How, how, would you, how would you kind of encourage them to get started with sharing charts? With charts, I would have probably if it's a brand new trader, I'll definitely recommend them to go over the book Mac educational videos that Bruce provides on YouTube. It is free, uh, just to get your feet wet with book map overall. Because I did come from just basic technical analysis. Now I use technical analysis with order flow from book map and level two data. Because it was a completely different learning experience. Um, just speak with the with the professional traders, just because you can always bounce off ideas. And just participating in the in the competition because overall it doesn't yes winning the competition is great, but just participating in the competition and learning from those traders and absorbing their their information, it's so much more helpful. Just yeah, if you don't win, just try again. Just keep trying again. It's just the accountability, the knowledge, the journaling, um, the reasoning why of the trades, which helps a lot. It's always go. It's always good to know the reason why because. Yes, I can 
I can just buy a random put because I see, um, let's just say for this instance, December, the NVIDIA trade. Yeah, I see it's going down. Uh, I have no sense of target, no sense of entry reasoning, no sense of risk to reward. Let me just buy a random put just because I feel like it. Okay, okay, good. I made 20% on this put. I'm done for the day. Let me just log out of my computer. You can't trade like that. You can't trade. You have to have an understanding. You have to have protocol. You have to have a strategy. It has to make sense. What's your win rate? Um, journal your trade. The reasoning why it's a lot of work when you're trading. But just putting the effort. If it's a new, if it's a new trader, just put in the effort. Uh, with Bookmap Discord, it's all free. Um, just have to pay for Bookmap. And for this one, this is Think or Swim. You're, it's a, it's a great learning experience overall. And for that new person, um, that's that wants to trade and wants to use Bookmap, just be patient. It takes time, but it's a great learning experience overall. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. JLA, thank you very much. Well said. Thanks again for taking time out to share more and go deeper into the content that won you the competition in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it. Um, I think the community is going to enjoy it as well. So, um, okay, yeah, thanks a lot again. Very, very much okay, appreciate it. Thank you it. so much, Owen. I greatly appreciate all your work. Thank you so much. And all of Bookmap as well. Like, that yeah, Discord, of it helped a lot.